This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Power on. Power on. It's time to take your place on the starting grid and get ready for Racer Radio. Your host, Dave Stahl, about to take you for a white knuckled lap around the motorsports industry, covering everything from top notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Watch for the apex because here comes Racer Radio with Dave Stahl. All right, folks, welcome to Racer Radio right here on FM 96.1. AM 1170. The answer. That would be the lovely Brittany. She's yes. in the house. Still hobbling, but she's almost I'm hobbling there. faster now. You are much quicker <laughs> on your little your little boot. All right. Who have we got in the house today? We've got Chase Kenzel and Angel Kenzel. And Chase is living the dream in the world of Supercross. Okay. How you doing, bud? I'm all right. How about you? So how long have you uh, been riding? Oh, man. Well, I'm 21. I got my first dirt bike when I was three. Yeah. Three. three. Wow. That's amazing. So, yeah. So, um, have you always wanted to ride bikes? Always. I mean, I mean, my first memories were watching dirt bikes on the TV. And uh, okay. as soon as I saw a dirt bike under the Christmas tree at three. Under kinda... the Christmas tree. Yeah. He had yeah. a big year that year. Oh, wow. yeah. Nice. That was a big year. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a favorite rider even at age three? Well, at that time, I was really, I looked up to uh, Mike Metzger, and he was actually a freestyle guy at that time. And yeah. I was just, I was just like into the showboat doing tricks. And <laughs> I didn't really know much about racing until I got around seven or eight. Um, my dad had uh, taught me about James Stewart, and yeah. he was really big at that in that era. Yeah. And, um, that's when you started racing was at seven. Yeah. I did really you didn't do tricks before. No, you... no. I just wanted to be, I was just on a little bike. I mean, yeah. I wanted to do like one handers and would sure, fall and sure. they, she would come and clean me up and clean my scrapes and bruises. But yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I've ended up finding my talent little to just going fast and racing that ended up working <laughs> a little bit better. So no tricks in, in, uh, Nothing on purpose. No, nothing on purpose. <laughs> and this kid's so crazy. The first time he was ever on a track on a practice, um, he went down and he got run over by like three riders. First time ever on a track, I got ran over. Yeah, wow. by three guys, and um, you didn't find out about that. No, I wasn't there for the practice. <laughs> I got a phone call. Well, there are things you hide from mom. Mom, I know you're listening. It was the first race. I needed that. to be there that morning. Yeah. So yeah, I got a phone call. Can you go get him a new chest protector? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why? Well, his is broken. broken. Exploded. It's yeah. good you had. Hey, at least you had one. Yeah. Oh yeah, it protected me. Because back this in job. the day, in my day, that and your dad's day, there was no such thing. Right. He's had one for a long time. I will say that. But I'm saying but back in the way 50s and back the 60s. in the day. No. Yeah, I wear one still. I yeah. went for a while without a kid, uh, kidney belt, and I regret that. Did you really? Yeah, because like right at the end of that is when I blew out two discs. I don't know if that's related, but mm. I don't go without anymore. So you're 21, so what do you got, another four or five years? I mean, it, it's kind of crazy because a lot of kids now, I mean, they're going pro at 16, 17, but no, they've I really, know. really been born and bred to be that racer. I think right. I kind of still, you know, with the public school, graduated from high school, working and still doing like a nine to five like i got a little desk job that yeah. that supports my racing so um i I'm respect just kinda, that i'm just kind of like working through the ranks um he is you literally are like yeah. you you were telling me the different divisions there's yeah so where were you where have yeah, you come are you now? so right now i'm like in a transitional stage since 2021 is right around the corner i will be moving up to the b class which would be intermediate uh at an amateur level um, as of right now, I was just in the C level, which was novice. But in terms of in Southern California, yeah, those kids right? are impressive. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you can. I was just watching a an uh, amateur national that was in Arizona Cycle Park uh, that was going on today. They had a live stream. Their C rider that won that race would drop the fastest lap time, and it was very comparable to the pro class. Like he could have ran top five, yeah. top ten in the pro class. So, um, I'm just kind of been. In terms of a national stage, I just got into it recently. Um, I didn't do necessarily like a lot of AMA races. I just kind of stuck to local racing, racing at Barona and Glen Helen and just kind of doing like the swap moto, just local stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, there's still definitely a lot of competition, a lot of, a lot of talent at those races. Mm -hmm. right. So um, that's where I kind of got my roots was just local racing and doing like a long series championships. I raced CMMC, which 
which was a California Mini Motorcycle Club. Right. He is the perpetual trophy holder. Oh, so mommy. yeah, that, so yeah, yeah, that was a big one. And I I raced started racing that series at eight, and then uh, did you know, sixty five beginner classes, then moved up to age group, and kind of didn't wow anyone by anything. But once I got on eighty fives, I found like really found my stride, mm-hmm. and then uh, two thousand eleven. Um, I won the CMMC Perpetual Trophy, which is been was awarded from 1974 to when the series ended in 2012. Yeah, and there's some um, big names. That there's some big names that. on that trophy: Ron Lachine, oh, um, yeah, uh, Billy Leninovich, another San Diego rider who ended up being professional and won mm-hmm. won races. Yeah. Um, there, there's a number of guys that have have a, a big name in the sport today. Uh, Scott Burnworth, another one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really cool to to earn that. That's kind of something that. And at that time, all of my friends that age, we that's all we wanted. We wanted that. We wanted our name on and that trophy. And I got it. So that was something I worked really hard for yeah. and really kind of boosted my talent in terms of my speed. And people started to notice that like I could and your confidence. Yeah, my confidence went up. Like I kind of realized that I could, you know, you could I could do this. I could I could ride, you know. So after that, um, we went into 2012. And we, that was the season that uh, CMMC Barona Oaks was actually shut down. They, so we they, were so yeah, that so that year I really didn't race much because I started the year, CMMC had just stopped, and then I I had an injury, I broke my wrist, um, so I took half the year off, and then I got on a super mini, which was a big wheel eighty five, and just started to get my feet wet in that class, and then we kind of didn't really have a series of race. There wasn't much going on super local to us in terms of Barona and being in San Diego. You'd have to drive two hours to go to mm-hmm. Paris or that was fun though. We had some new tracks. To yeah, that on, was so. really yeah. fun. We got to do I got to ride at Paula and and race in different riders too and guys that were racing that national level, which mm-hmm. that was another big thing that I realized that And that's you know, good for you. Yeah, yes. That's definitely huge for me. Just racing against guys that are coming around the country and stuff like that. I didn't get that exposure uh, until a couple years ago. But on the eighty fives and kind of working through those ranks, I kinda got my I would say my speed. Um, and then I just kind of had some bad luck those couple last uh, couple years after that. I had a lot of injuries. Yeah. Uh, you could vouch for those. <laughs> I have pictures of him with like both arms and cast. I had multiple um, broken wrists, broken foot, collarbone. I mean, it just didn't stop. It felt like I couldn't even get on a dirt yeah. bike without, without breaking something. Without breaking something. And, <laughs> you know, it's in the sport, it's not if, it's when. So, yeah. Um, this last one was a doozy. This, yeah. This, yeah. That this took away one of those to- lives. Of the nine lives. Uh, yeah. Had. This is a 2020 accident we're talking about. Yeah. So right this now. one was another one. So uh, I was. Just well, you what you wanted to do. Talk about accidents. <laughs> huh? I really don't want to talk about it. But at the same time, it's like it's taught me a lot. Um, you know, a lot of people stop riding dirt bikes because of nope. the injuries. And, you know, what did you break? Uh, this injury was uh, I broke my C3 in my neck. And then I burst fractured my T4 in my back. And pressure fracture it T3. doesn't even look like it does it dave look this at was in right may here. this was happened in may so, so I'm to doing the listeners pretty good. out there it, literally it happened doesn't the, look like it yeah it really I'm, happened the day before day after day my after 21st, 21st birthday, birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so you got to celebrate Where were you at? i was at paula fox raceway and it was uh just a freak accident it wasn't anything They're i wasn't doing anything ex- it wasn't anything extreme i hit false neutral on a jump and and I went end over end and went head first, and the bike just followed me. And, yeah, yeah that they was do it. that. So mm-hmm. I got to tell you this story. You don't remember a guy by the name of Tahamel, Tahamel, but he was a world class back in the day. And he was dry as toast. And interviewing <laughs> him, just I, I hated interviewing because he just was so dry. And we were at uh, Auto Club Speedway, and the super bikes were there. Mm-hmm. And he was trying to get me to go on a ride with him on the back. I go, no. <laughs> you're not getting on the back doing a buck 75 down the street no not doing it so we were talking on air and everything and finally i says so have you ever found that device that's on the bike uh, i says when when you crash it's kind of like radar and it hunts you down and tries to poke holes in you <laughs> he laughed so hard as a first and only time i got to laugh and he said no but if i ever find it I'm ripping it out of the bike. Right. Because they do like to find you and try to poke holes in you. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a quick break and listen to Racer Radio right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. I can hear your voice saying, won't you ever learn? Folks, 
folks, welcome back to Racial Radio right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The Answer. Listening to Racer Radio right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. I was trying to get a thumbs up to Brendan. Why? Oh, that was a nice groove coming in. Oh, it's not. it was not Sprung Monkey? It was not Sprung Monkey. That's okay. Does he know Sprung Monkey? I don't know. Ask him. I can't see him. I know Sprung Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> you <Attaboy>. better. <laughs> All right, we just double check. So, so let me ask you this, Chase. We'll have you jump into this segment because... You know, like I said, you're 21 years old, so the chances of going pro are probably slim. Yeah, I mean, then again, sky's the limit. John Dowd went pro no. at 29, right? No, I, I, I didn't look say you that hey, go to pro. So I, I definitely what are your like goals and aspirations. I mean, where, how are you keeping yourself focused? Are you just looking at it as I'm having a blast? Pretty much. I mean, like I look at it in the end of the day as I've found my soul and happiness on a dirt bike and I want to do what I can do to support myself living a two wheeled life. Rather that be racing, free riding and going and playing with just my friends and having fun and filming video content for YouTube I and stuff like that. I was going to bring that up. Is that a whole nother kind it's, of passion It's a whole nother interest? thing. And in, in reality, like motocross is really becoming a lot more versatile. There's a lot of guys that are kind of not just doing the racing aspect because it's either you race or you did you were doing double backflips and freestyle now which it's just a little too extreme but right. free riding is definitely becoming a lot more popular i mean you see it with like the core freestyle guys that's where they kind of got that from was free riding and now like axel hodges would be a great example he was coming through the ranks as a racer and just kind of got burned out on it but he loved just to ride and his talent kind of spoke for himself and he produces great content and got good sponsors and he's able to just have fun and make a little bit of money and, exactly. and have fun. So, so I really, mean, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you right now because I didn't get into this till I was 50. Yeah. So you never know when that door is going to open. Exactly. You just have to keep knocking on them. Yeah. So same thing. With yeah, you. I was just thinking that I didn't start racing a car until I was 42. Yeah. Yes. 42 years old, and, and, and did finally you even, found my passion. Right. And you were on d- bikes. Motorcycles. Prior to that. Love them. Love my sweet pea. He's a Kawasaki dry, rider as well. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you, what do you ride? Call I got a KX450. So, oh, yeah, okay. I've been riding green bikes pretty much my whole <laughs> racing career. So, yeah. 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 We only had one bike that was not a Cowie, and we got we Cowie made it plastics. A Cowie. <laughs> yeah, it was my first little <laughs> JR50. It was Suzuki, but we uh, we were camped with some with some guys at Kawasaki, and they said that he can't ride that. Yeah, we're really gonna, yeah, we're going to change that up. So, <laughs> he, Chase was very blessed to be surrounded with really great people that were in the industry. So, like... Uh, the team green leader Reed Nordine, uh, yeah, was one. You know, one of I'm our not sure if he's still there or not, but that's no, the he's time. not. He retired. But, yeah, and Sean, um, Sean Finley, Finley and Mark Finley. Uh, Mark Finley is at Fox Racing, and Sean was at Dirt Rider Magazine, I think. Yeah, and I'm not too sure if he's still yeah. in the industry or not. But we were able to meet people when I was really young, and kind of, you know, by stars opened up my eyes seeing you know like what you can do in motorcycles so i mean i've been able to find a career working at bikebanded.com and ktm twins and that's a local company in there um so basically online parts retailer and um you know i'm on the phones with people and i was going to ask you what 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 you're doing now so you're working for for bikebandit.com and they have ownership of a company called ktm twins and that's kind of more my deal accessories yeah so it's a ktm oem parts uh power parts and power wear accessories and stuff like that so um you have nothing ktm on no i'm i don't i'd hate (laughs) what is wrong no this picture no no because i because i ride a green bike it's different because i don't actually ride a ktm but i mean i sell the product so Uh, well you should see i always tell everybody we should always wear what you're promoting well, I do have my 3D mask right here. That's and another one of my sponsors that actually helps me out. 3D San Diego. What do they do? Uh, they are um, so they make uh, like car care for detailing cars, um, a lot of uh, oh, cleaning products and stuff like what's that. What's his face? Um, Smart car care. Yeah. What's what's the guy's name? Down? I think the well, I know Alan. Uh, yeah. Alan Castro. 
Yeah. Yeah. They, I know they, his dad real well. Yeah. Um, I worked at a Cycle Gear a few years back, and me and him were coworkers, and he went back over there. Well, he sponsors my radio show. Nice. Yeah. I'm, uh, uh, Albert, no. Darn, I cannot think of his name to save my life. What is your mother doing? Over I don't She's know. pointing at the Seven shirt I actually got oh. her, too. That's another one of my sponsors that helps me out, oh, okay. uh, Seven Gear. Um, keep me looking good right. on and off and track. And me, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at my shirt. I is love it, your cars. I still, there you go. Yeah, I definitely have a few people that still I support me. So. billboards. Right. And they should be used accordingly. You know what? Yeah. We're all billboards. Where's yours? You should have your school on there. No. No. Oh. <laughs> she does that with she, well, It's not I, in the contract. I was working till the sun went down on Friday doing grades. I was up this morning working on grades. I've had enough of school right now. That's why I don't give Ted. When I was teaching at Quayamac, I said no tests. I did um, one, two. I don't remember which time. I've jumped out of a plane a few times. We had a new school. Oh, jeez. We had a new school logo, and I, one of my jumps, I jumped out, and the cameraman caught it. Just I was doing a backflip, and it said Lewis Middle School you didn't across answer, it. Answer my question. Nothing was wrong with. The then plane, why would Dave, because it's a fun. Good no, it is. Why not? not? No, I don't. Why like not? Splat! It's it would be that's the what the parachute's for. No, and it works most of the time. Thank you very much. Yes, right. most of the time. All right. So, <laughs> see, it's see. I think it's really hard to do a career and work too. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to make a living. You got to, you know, you got to put food in the mouth type of a thing. And we talked about kind of Chris Noons on the side. Yeah. And he's lucky enough to have a family that supports him from a financial point of view, and it's allowed Absolutely. him to progress yeah. accordingly. What? No, I'll keep going, and I got something popped in my head, Dave. Well, quick, grab it before well, it jumps Well, I'm wondering, out. like, okay, so we have the path of a career, and then we have paths of racers, most of them, that don't make a career. Is either one having more fun than the other? Because no. we're still and having you, fun, right? That. You're in that lane. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just kind of reminds me of when I get asked, oh, so did you win this weekend? And I'm like, no. no. but I had fun doing I, it. I, but th I've been asked, then why do you do it? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, where wow. do I begin on how much fun and how, you know, well, why? Well, don't get it. So, like, Jasper, yeah. do you bowl? Well, yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. Do you win? Yeah. No. Yeah. Have you ever got a three? I, I, I collect antique radios. Mm -hmm. I love them. Yeah. Everybody asks me, do they work? <laughs> I go, no, they couldn't pick anything up with today's technology. Oh, uh -huh. A tube radio. No, I like them because they're handmade, they're solid wood, and they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So I think everybody should have their own passion. Um, from a from a person, you're amazing. I if, appreciate that. To, no, I mean, if, if I was selling a product... I'm telling you, it's just like you and Chris. I definitely like, like believe in being an advocate yes. of of your product. And you got to believe in it, or it don't, exactly, or don't, or don't push it. You know, I mean, I've seen, especially in this sport. You know, the stuff that we need to wear to stay safe. It's extremely important. Has you know, that not come a long way. Oh well, yeah, so okay, cute story. So I interviewed. You ever heard of a guy by the name of Evil Knievel? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Who? I interview Evil Knievel, and really? they want me to do it live. I said. <laughs> this is the last man on the planet you want to interview live. So I interviewed him. So I happened to ask him about his son, Robbie, who was terrible. Uh, I says, but how would you compare to Robbie? Now ah, you're talking about he has to so much suspension. He's got to, mm -hmm. I had four inches and he's got 22. So things yeah. are evolving. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but be that as it may, I think what you got to do is do exactly what you're doing. Every day is, is going to come and go. Give it 110% every Absolutely. day. Have and I'm going to give you another piece of advice because you're 21, you're a little on the late side, and you need to tell well, I'm Whistle, twice as old as him, and he's you, on the late side? You need to start oh a, uh, a diary. Yeah. Every night before you go to bed, write down how the day went. Good, bad, and indifferent. When That's you're 40, great advice. 50, when you're 40, 50 years old, it'll either be a book or a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Because stop and think about it. Every yours, you could have done the same thing. Oh, yeah. You could have done oh, the same yeah. thing. Even hot rod inside the box. If we would put our lives down on paper, I'm telling you, you could retire off of it. Well, now we have social media. That, I was yeah, thinking that. <laughs> yeah, but you don't. Ha yeah, you got social media, but that's instantaneous. It's yeah. there and it's gone. This That's written in solid thought. Yeah, but it doesn't stay. Go put something on Facebook and then tell me if you can find it in 10 I minutes. I know, right? Yeah. That's, I can never find it. Not even it. tell me <laughs> if it later. pops up on your memories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can yeah, find yeah, it yeah, every yeah. year. 
But then what? it doesn't tell you the whole memory like I do cars. Uh, It'll pop up a car, and I can't remember the car because it doesn't say what it, it didn't put on what I wrote. Well, go it to your says, diary, Dave. <laughs> I know I should, but I've, yeah. I've given it up. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Why? Because pay for this. we can. Oh. We're going to let her do the... <gasps> oh, okay. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Folks, this is Racer Radio FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Folks, welcome back. You're listening to Racer Radio right here on FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. All right, refresh everybody's memory. Who is our guest today? Chase Kenzel and Angel Kenzel. All right, both got Supercraft. good race names. Yeah. 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 If they can pronounce it right. The, yeah, well, did we she did. do it right? Did she do it right? Kenzel. No, it's Kenzel. She got it right. It's when we're at the races, I was oh. Kenzel. Or, yeah, or we get some oh, odd we've, ones. we've had some butchering. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you. I've it's... been called Bridget most of my life because <laughs> Brittany wasn't so common when I was younger. Oh, really? But... And now it's like the most common name. Yeah. <laughs> Chase yeah. is a great race name. Yeah, it's a good name. Yeah. yeah. I actually got a butt patch made that says Chase This on it. I need it still <laughs> to get put on my on my on pants. Your, on your on your Leathers? Outfit. Yeah, so when I go riding, you know. Well, isn't that what everybody's doing now? I mean... I mean, that's the latest thing. They're putting their names right on their butts. Now, now well, people are getting gear made where it's like sublimated into the graphic yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no. another, another great career is uh, painting helmets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of the guys I race with have custom helmets. There's a lot of custom painted helmets that are like complete just works of art. I'd yeah. love to get a custom painted helmet. I mean, you didn't even want to wear it. I know, right? I know. Yeah. You know, I had a friend of mine, Lyle Fisk, paint a helmet for me. I, re- I had an opportunity to race out at the Speed Festival. And he painted a helmet. I was in a BMW, and he painted it black, red, and, bl- and you know, blue, and the red and the white. And oh my god! And I don't want to put the thing on. I nicked it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. And it's to this day, it still drives it. But is it a good memory? The best ever. But the only problem is, I only raced once a year <laughs> amongst people that race all the time. And I mean, and I'm out there, and they put me in a class with Camaros, Challengers, and Corvettes. Mm-hmm. And I'm in a four-cylinder BMW. <laughs> I was good in the turns. Yeah. But yeah, they ate me on the straightaway. So yeah. anyway, so going back. So you kind of, I'm a little surprised. So if I handed you a, a four-wheel race car, you'd turn it down? Most likely right now. Oh. I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't try it. but We have to talk. So. We'd, we'd have to talk. Yeah. We'd have to talk. But yeah. I mean, I don't That's know, like two saying, wheels. Do you like spinach? No. <laughs> have you ever eaten it? No. Well, you, yeah. No, you got. I can't knock it till I try it. So, what, would you encourage it, Mom? Yes. <laughs> well, only because it's yeah, because I can Yeah. 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 I I I really should have invested in bubble wrap for this child <laughs> from but day one. But he would look real silly going around the track with bubble wrap. <laughs> it's true. It would slow him down. But too. you know, and, and you talk to anybody, and I've talked to all of them. I've talked to Stuart, and I've talked. I mean, I've talked to. Uh, uh, Pastrana, and I mean, I've interviewed them all, and every one of them has broke just about everything yeah. mm-hmm. from head to toe. Yeah, and I've always asked them, so would you would you change anything? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, you heal. Yeah, yeah. you live and learn. You At live the and time, learn. you may say I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> but then once you recover and you re- heal, it's like well, oh, this okay. this past injury really like woke me up because I lost feeling in my legs temporary for well, a little you bit been paralyzed. yeah it was like i saw the the eye through the needle on that one and my doctors told me you are you're a little lucky kid so that woke me up i mean i was kind of does it change the way you ride now absolutely i think i'm a way better rider than what i was prior to injury oh, just because just... i just really wanted one thing i wanted to work on was like riding on the balls of my feet working on gripping with the bike and not just kind of having that raw dog go fast yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, go yeah, yeah. go crazy when i get on the track i try to be more calculated and it's paid off i mean the first time i got back on the track from this injury i mean i notice i'm doing different things on on the bike and a lot of the people that are there supporting me said that i'm look a lot better so well when you when you're young mm-hmm. and you race via adrenaline oh yeah you're yeah. gonna get hurt yeah it's it's not if it's when it's so. exactly it's not if and, and it's not just because you did it today it's not going to happen tomorrow exactly. or the next day or the next day you know so when you every time i hit the track i mean that it just leaves my head i mean i think about it for sure um it's a scary sport the older I mean, I, you get 
the more you'll think about it. Absolutely, yeah. Because you're because you're really playing, excuse me, mom, Russian roulette. Oh yeah. Oh. I mean, she's we've seen seen it with with other and families that we're worse close to. So to have mom sitting in the stands and watching <laughs> her kid. Do you watch all his races? I did. I tried to. Um, lately, well, I mean, with this season, it's been yeah. wonky. Well, yeah, nobody can then, talk about we're, we're traveling, you know, way further now than just to, we'll, yeah. to, just go to get to, the ride. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you're now the race, I'm trying to race more at the AMA races and at a mm-hmm. national level. I mean, they're cross country. You know, there's only a couple. There's a couple races in California. I mean, most of them got canceled this year. So uh, we got lucky with California Classic. I raced that at the end of October, and that was right. one of my first big races post injury. Went out there and got a second and a fifth overall. So I mean, I was really happy with it right. coming basically off the couch. So yeah, um, are you going to train for next year physically? Absolutely. I mean, oh, you're I, encouraging it, that. We're, that's everyone only around me. Save you. Ev- everyone around me is like, it's kind of come to the point where I can't just show up and ride anymore. This the skill set that's needed. <laughs> it's, you used to be able to. I mean, I used to be able, but now it's going to be. I need to commit, you know, and I I'm willing to do it. I want to put in the work. I want to get better and and you know wow people. So that's the plan is to kind of get a more into a program, have more of a plan of where I want to race, you know what I need to work towards when I'm at the track practicing and, you know, just trying to elevate my game. When's the last time you talked to Chris? Ah, man, it's been... I saw him maybe like a year or two ago. He's working with a guy out of San Diego State. Really? Well, like a a trainer? trainer. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, isn't he doing like a... He's doing a lot of, um... Uh, Yeah. Sim, like simulated simulated sessions. (laughs) But this guy, he's actually got this, this, this instructor, professor... He's got this special simulator that's all set up. Mm-hmm. And I guess he wires him up, and you should find a graduate student trying to work through a. Well, Chris would help him. Yeah, but you know, Chris could get him in the, into a program. He could. He could be. He could be their part thesis. of the thesis. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, and the, the thing of it is, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do. Yeah. You can't. I mean, I know your mom would just assume you not, but and maybe <laughs> other people would just assume you not. But it, it, you can't. You have yeah. to do what you have to do. You have to feed the soul. Yeah. You gotta That's why prepare, I still... you got to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're old enough now where you can't fall back on youth anymore. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm lucky enough to, you know, I have a good career where I, mean, I got health insurance. That helped me out a lot. And oh, I got that wow. backbone. Good. Yeah. And I had great good... doctors. I was in physical therapy for several weeks and I made huge gains in such a short period of time. I mean, I... I got back on the bike at uh, 13 weeks. Wow! So, so and, what was that thought when you couldn't feel your legs? I'm, uh, I went into shock. I blacked out actually as soon as I I tried to move my legs and I couldn't. That's when everything kind of yeah. went black. And then I came to and you know slowly the feeling came back and like yeah, but it, not minutes. Right? It, it was it was I would say 45 to a minute. It was, a, oh. it, it was, and it was crazy because I didn't have any sort of spinal cord injury. It was just, I, I had so, I hit the ground so hard with the bike eating me and it, I got cartwheeled. I don't really know. There's not many people. Wit- no witnesses. Good. <laughs> Good. Cause who wants to look at that, right? Uh, I mean, I got a couple crashes on film. You make me cry over I know. here. <laughs> like it, it, fre- all it freaked everyone around me out for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, this is just but that I, sport. But you I'm know? a firm believer, and I hate to even say it, but when your number's up, your number's yeah. up. Yep. I don't care what you're doing. You could be sitting on the pot. Or you could be going into turn nine, flat out, pinned. Mm-hmm. It's And so you can't worry, you know, about... You just got to be prepared. Yep. That's... I think he lucked out on this one, too, because when it did happen in May, he didn't have, because of COVID, we yeah. could not be there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was wow. in there like alone. He be on his own, and it was a big growing experience yeah. for him to, yeah. to have to experience that on his own, because normally myself or his father are calling all yeah. the shots. Was mommy know? the first thing you said when you came? <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually, I because that no one was, I was just right day after my birthday, it was like me and my buddies kind of just went out the track and was trying to film some videos and, and things oh, so just went south. you weren't even out. racing. No, it was just a practice day. And it was just, went out there, I had all new gear and I was just really stoked, just go ride. It wasn't even like, just, you know, just want to go put around. And, and you weren't was, even putting it 
I wouldn't get out there. Were no, you? I was, I would say I was just, I wasn't the vet track of everything. I wasn't even on the main track, what I'd normally <laughs> ride. Like it was such a freak ordeal, but that just goes to show like this sport, it doesn't matter where it's at. Yeah. Like it'll come up to bite you. So well, let's just say one important factor too. He was not on his bike. Yeah, that was another thing. That, happened. that was another thing. I was not on my own bike. Got a flat tire and you know, m- my buddy's been, being the gent- nice guy he was. Here, you can ride mine. Hey, man, I hate sitting here. You know, I'll get your tire changed by these guys over here. Like, go go ride around for a few minutes. Uh, and, and sure enough, I mean, his bike came out okay, luckily. I mean, me, not so much. Yeah. But, but. Well, it's like the story I told you about the Rolls Royce and the tree. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, you never know you when never things know. are going to happen. Right. And they could either go good or they could go bad. Well, I'll tell you. It's been an absolute joy having you on. I appreciate it. You're always welcome to come back. There's you know, the teach could get a hold of you anytime. There you go. But you got my card, so it's just send me an email. Thank you for letting me come and in. More, and we definitely want to set up, because with KUSI, I do a lot of car shows and things, but because of COVID, I can't. Mm. So what I've been doing is, 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 is going individually on individuals. In fact, go to Google, put my name in, click on YouTube, and then click on all videos. And then you can see all the crazy crap I do. There you go. I and, got homework. And Chris is, Chris <laughs> is on there. You can see the video that Chris has done as well. Cool. Yeah, so. I watched that spot. Oh, of did course. you see it? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. I had to see we're, Chris we're on there. We're fans. I've known Chris since he was this We used big. to butt heads <laughs> on the gate, but me and him were friends oh, off the track. So. I can believe it, too. Yeah, he's a he's a really good kid. I'm so happy that he, you know, because I pushed him into that Mazda thing. I said, dude, you got to get That was. It. Yeah, that's you phenomenal. Get into it. I said, and you're going to do it on talent. You know, I mean. And he won the money, so Dude, that's yeah. Fantastic. All right, we got to get out of here. Racer Radio's over, but hey, Gun Owner Radio coming up next. This is KCBQ Gun Owner or it's a Red Gun Owners Radio. Racer Radio, FM ninety six one eight eleven seventy. The answer. That is true. That is true. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.
This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Power on. Power on. It's time to take your place on the starting grid and get ready for Racer Radio. Your host, Dave Stahl, about to take you for a white knuckle lap around the motorsports industry, covering everything from top notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Watch for the apex, because here comes Racer Radio with Dave Stahl. All right, folks, welcome to Racer Radio right here on FM 96.1. AM 1170. The answer. That would be the lovely Brittany. She's in the house. Still hobbling, but she's almost I'm hobbling faster now. You are much quicker (laughs) on your little little boot. This segment is brought to you by San Diego Carburetor Fuel Injection. You want to get better fuel mileage, better performance. Maybe you want to trick out a classic car, make it more realistic. Stan's got it all. And if you drive a BMW Mini or Porsche, Black Forest Motorsports has over 40 years experience. It can make your car do everything you want it to do and it's a great alternative to the dealer all right who have we got in the house today we've got chase kenzel and angel kenzel and chase is living the dream in the world of supercross hey how you doing bud i'm all right about you so how long have you uh, been riding oh man well i'm 21 i got my first dirt bike when i was three yeah three, three. wow that's amazing